So you guys dropped Step Into the AM, but on that same album was The Gas Face. Correct. And uh, at the end of The Gas Face, you guys diss MC Hammer. Correct. And you guys even had like this like this giant hammer in the video with like Kazelle glasses on that you guys like slap over and stuff like that. I was at the time I was living in the Bay and uh, you know, Hammer was one of our heroes in the Bay, you know, because I mean the world knew him for can't touch this, but you know, the, the hip hop kids were fans before that, you know, um, turn this mother out and, you know, and so forth. What was it about MC Hammer that made you guys actually diss him in one of your singles like that so publicly? Well, for me, there was something private, and then there was something public. So private, um, early on in my career, I was a valet, and I used to do things for Houdini. I would write a lyric here and there, like I would help them with, you know, ca carrying their stuff, steaming their clothes. Like, you know, I was basically a roadie for Houdini. Um, I went out with them on a trip to the Bay Area, and people were talking about this guy, MC Hammer, MC Hammer, MC Hammer. And um, I heard he was a really good dancer. And I was really, you know, I prided myself on being a really good dancer as well. Like, I could jump through my leg and all of that. So I get out to the Bay Area and people were telling me about this kid who worked for the Oakland A's, who was a, a ball boy who was selling records out of his trunk. And, you know, basically following the two short, you know, kind of career path. We were at this event, this basketball event, and Hammer pulls up, he's got this beautiful Cadillac, and people are like giving him a shout out. And um, I just rolled up on him and I was like, yo, I heard, you know, I said, yo, my name's Search, I heard you're a good dancer, let's battle. That's, you know, New York mentality. Figuring that that translated anywhere. And he looks at me, he's like, yo, fuck you, and he drives off. So I'm like, Okay, whatever. So in the memory bank, goes in the memory bank, you know, whatever. Fast forward, and Hammer disses Run DMC and says that he wasn't hitting in New York, his videos dissing running them. And Joey and Jay, may he rest in peace, yo, that shit really bothered them. And it really bothered us. Like, how are you going to diss the dudes that gave you a lane? Like, you wouldn't even be on American Bandstand. Like, you know, at the time, there were very few lanes for hip-hop, but they were all opened by Run DMC. It was either Run DMC or LL Cool J. Your music didn't move those type of kids, right? So you ain't hitting in New York. So we took it personally. So Jay is the reason I even really got on. So, like, Jay was beyond just someone that I idolized because he was from Queens. Jay, is, Jay was, like, a mentor, a father figure. Like, Jay was... So, when I was doing Gas Face, I told Jay. I was like, yo, we're going we're gonna to say, yo, Hammer gets a Gas Face. What do we think about Hammer? And Jay said to me, he goes, and when you do the video, we're all going to be there. So we did, you know, we told Ralph McDaniels to do this hammer thing and all of that. And when we did that, Jam Master J was there, DMC was there, Run was there. You know, J was the one, D knocks the glasses off him, J knocks him down. And then we had one of our homeboys who looked like the two big MC to grab him and run him off, right? Ha, ha, ha. All good. And then, you know, Pete said the line that really pissed Hammer off about, you know, Cactus turned Hammer's mother out. Um, and that was the one that really, that really took Hammer over, over, the, over, the, over the edge. But the whole genesis of it for me was twofold. One, he wouldn't battle me, which is petty, but I was, you know, I was 19 years old. Like, so in my, my mentality and how we looked at how we dealt with things in hip hop, you battle. That's not his culture. It's not where he comes from. And even if it is, what does he have to prove to me? And I understand this now, now that I'm a fucking grown man, but 19, I'm full of piss and vinegar, and he's telling me, go fuck myself, like, oh, fuck you. So when we did the Gas Face video, like, first of all, that record was piping hot in New York. We were like, that was like the hottest record in New York. So everybody came to the video. Kid and Play, Herbie Lovebug, Salt and Pepper, uh, Run DMC, you know, Shake, the, you know, Stretch, like all these people, like mad, 
Eric Sermon was in the video too. Eric Sermon, um, mm -hmm. Paris, um, well, EPMD, you know, yeah. uh, Gilbert Gottfried's in the video. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like it was like, it was a, a little bit of a movement, you know, for the city. So we felt like we owed it to running them to hold them down the way they held me down. Cactus album. Our album was called The Cactus. Hammer's album was called Turn This Mother Out. We had a song called The Cactus. Title song to the album. Last verse, Pete says something, and then the last line is, The Cactus Turned Hammer's Mother Out. And I went, there it is. Now that line, for any MC realized, people realized that we were saying that our album was better than his album. But it was a play on words and it was fucking dope. It was a fucking dope play on words. The Cactus Turned Hammer's Mother Out. The name of his album was Turn His Mother Out. So our album, we felt our album was better. Like again, confrontation, battle, that's like where we come from in New York. It's standing up for your shit. He didn't take it that way. He took it extremely literal. We were doing a huge promotion in LA for the release of the Cactus album. Album party, performances, local Fox 5 was doing a story. They had a show called The Reporters. They were following us around. Um, we were giving away a Jeep, a product of the environment Jeep on K-Day, which was the first 24 hour rap station in the, in the country. And it was our first trip to Los Angeles. I'd never been. Um, so we're all excited. And we're all getting on the plane. I got my girlfriend, now wife, Chantel, on the plane. And Pete has his girlfriend. And Daddy Rich has his girlfriend. And, you know, we're all just happy and excited. And we're going out there. And we're hearing all these cool things like, you know, people are just loving the album. And, you know, all sorts of cool things that we're hearing about, you know, our music kind of transcending over, you know, state lines. And the president of Def Jam at the time was a woman named Carmen Asher Swatson. She gets a call just as we get on the plane. And I believe they identified that the call was from Hammer's brother, Louis Burrell. And I don't, I can't prove that or not prove that, but that's what it came down to. Whoever was on the phone said, hey, is third base still coming to L.A.? And she said, yes. And the voice said, good, they're dead, and hung up the phone. So Carmen, being the sensible person, doesn't like just be like, oh, whatever. Calls Russell and says, hey, I think we might have a problem <laughs> with third base in Los Angeles. I think I just got a death threat. So Lior had a dude who worked with him from Los Angeles named Big D. Um, and Big D was also the day-to-day -day, like security for Run DMC. So Lior calls Big D and Big D says, well, the person we need to call is Eric B. Eric B will know. Eric B <laughs> calls Russell and goes, yeah, it's true. There's a hit. There's a hit. Uh, rolling 60 Crips, 30,000 members, $50,000, dead. So Russell says to Eric B, well, how do we stop this? And Eric says, nah, you should just let it happen, and hangs up the phone. Russell, in some way, shape, or form, gets in touch with Mike Conception. And Mike confirms what's going on. But Mike says that he can control it, and that they shouldn't worry, because the only thing that will happen is he'll, they'll just break our legs. But we'll still be able to do TV from the waist up. <laughs> and... Uh, Russell says, well, listen, how do, we, how do we protect them completely? And Mike says, well, I need two things. He goes, first of all, I got this record called We're All in the Same Gang, and I need some help kind of figuring out a label situation, so if you could help me with that. But the second thing is, tonight's the American Music Awards, and I want to sit next to Michael Jackson. Russell called Donnie Einer, who was the chairman of CBS, and said, I need your tickets for the American Music Awards. I got a guy who needs to sit next to Michael Jackson. Needless to say, they tell me the story. And in typical New York fashion, I'm like, this is all bullshit. This is bullshit. And I'm fighting with this dude, Uncle Mel, who's in, in, you know, who they brought in, in charge of our security, 
who wound up doing security for Dre and Easy and like, you know, Uncle Mel became like the security guard in, in, in LA. And as they're arguing with us, this dude comes in and this was his name. It wasn't even, his name was Pookie. And he was my conception's lieutenant. And he tells us he's here to stay by us the entire time. That Mike sent him, staying with us the entire time. And I said, oh, you're supposed to protect me? And I remember he had a short sleeve shirt and he had all these welts. And my wife just politely says, oh, you know, how did you get the keloids? He's like, he said, nah, love, these are bullets. So now I'm really thinking this dude's full of shit, right? So I'm like, all right, man. I said, look, I want to take my wife to Louis Vuitton at the Beverly Center. Like, and Uncle Mel's like, yo, you don't, and, and Pookie's like, no, 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 no. Let's, let's search want to go. We can, we, let's go. Go down the escalator. All these chicks start noticing me. They start rumbling. My swag is on a thousand. I'm starting to sign autographs, right? And I'm, you know, when, you know, you're around like people that want to meet you. You know, you you know, you got your head down, you're signing autographs. And I started to look up and there's these dudes coming from south and west, you know, and they're just walking over, whatever. And I'm signing autographs and I look up and I'm signing autographs. And, and as they get closer, the dude over here, he pulls the rag up. Dude over here, he pulls the rag up. They start to spread the girls. And as they come up to me, Pookie whistles. Everything stops. He throws up some signs, whatever signs he throws up. And it's one dude right in front of me who's got his hand on his ratchet, pulls down his mask, and he goes, yo, man, I, finna, I, I, I love that record, but I was finna smoke you right now, homie. And the dude right next to me comes over. He goes, yo, can I get an autograph, man? And he's like, yo, homie, I was finna smoke you too. You know, fucking Pookie didn't say nothing. I was finna smoke you, man, you know. And I'm like, who you want me to make the autograph out to? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, so I'm like, oh fuck, yo, this shit is real. This shit is this shit is real, real. Needless to say, I'm the fuck out of there. I call Russell. I said, yo, this shit is real. This shit is real. This motherfucker put a hit out on us over some lyrics. I'm gonna fucking kill this motherfucker. The next day, we were giving away the Jeep on Greg Max, The Mac Attack, which was the morning show at K-Day. We walk in, and it's the day after the American Music Awards, and we walk into Greg Mack, and we're all excited, and Greg Mack is shaking our hands, and we're all happy dappy, and you know, excited to be on the morning show in LA, and yada, da da da. Cracks the mic, turns it on, K-Day, you know, da 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 AM, you know, Third base is here, probably the environment release, album party tomorrow at the palace. And you know, we're giving away that the third base Jeep. Uh, but we got a special person on the phone right now. Five of music, American Music Awards last night. He's up, he stayed up on our behalf. MC Hammer's on the phone. Hammer, how you doing? Hey, Greg, man, I'm great. Yo, it's great to talk to you, yada, da 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 da. He goes, yo, I heard you had something you wanted to say to uh, third base. He's like, well, you know, I just, I just want to tell him, you know, I don't think it's cool for somebody to, you know, diss their mom in a record. Like, you know, I don't think that's cool. Now, mind you, I never said that lyric. Pete said the lyric, right? So I look over to Pete. You're a rhyme, dude. Say something. Nothing. Hmm. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. I, so, I, so I say, you know what? I said, man, if, I said, if, if you feel like we dissed your matriarchal, that's okay, but you know what you did. You know what's going on in these streets. Why don't you man up and see me face to face so we can figure this out? Stop being a bitch. He takes a call live. Greg Mack, who's this? Rolling 60 Crip, N word. We finna kill them. Boop! Ah, ow! <laughs> Security grabs us. We run out the fucking building. We get into the van. We start heading down the, the, the hill. There's two blue cars. And these dudes get out, Mac 11s, pointing at the fucking vehicle. Pookie jumps out, <laughs> throws his signs up. They get back in. They leave. So now the big issue is, well, we got to give this Jeep away, which is now not happening. They'll figure that out. But we got to go to our party. Because not only are we doing this album release party, but Channel uh, Fox 5 is shooting it for the show The Reporters. 
you know, it's a big release, yada, da, da, da. And when we went to sound check, the entire palace, which is next across the street from the Capitol building, you know, is circled, circled by blue vehicles. Because Rolling 60, the Rolling 60 got like 50,000 members. So they can't get to everybody. And we can't not show. Like, it's not going to happen. Big D is with my conception the whole time. He's standing next to him. He goes to a recording session for We're All in the Same Gang. Hammer's there. Hammer and Mike have words. I don't know what was said. I heard it was something to the effect of Hammer asking Mike, why weren't they dead yet? And he says it in front of Big D. Whatever, and again, I can't, I don't know if it's true or not true, but this is what I was told. Mike tells him to go into the studio, don't worry about it, go into the, you know, the, the session, do what he has to do. And they figure out that the only way to protect us to get into the palace that night is we have to go in as security. So we're in Kevlar, ACS, I think it was ACS Security was the name of the, the security company. We got the jackets, we got the hats, we got dark glasses. I'm saying goodbye to my girl. She's crying at the Hyatt because they, you know, they want to make sure we get in first and yada, yada, yada. So we're, we're in a dark van and we see nothing but dudes just circling the venue. We get into the venue. Anyone, if you had blue socks, they told you to leave the building. There was an interview with All Hip Hop from like nine years ago or something where they asked him about that and he completely denied it. He said it was all nonsense. It's ironic that even today, 20 something years later, you know, uh, the search cat, he wants his claim to fame to be, I'm telling you, Hammer was gonna have me, you know, put in the dirt somewhere. That's ridiculous. I mean, that's ridic it's ridiculous that you want that to be your claim to fame. But when you only sold about 300,000 records, you got to grab something. You know what I'm saying? So the only conversation that man could ever have with me is to say, man, you know you was going to do something to me one time. But other than that, you can't even speak to me because 300,000 records, you know, even now, you still ain't with wood today. You ain't, you, you undergo, so the only thing I can say is wood. Even 20 years later, you really can't address me. I'm, I'm saying the only thing, I, the conversation we have is because he can come in and talk to you as you're going to do an interview. But... You know, relatively speaking, man, my, my groups that I created sold more records than him. All of them. Three, five, seven, you know. My group sold more records. Angie B sold more records than that cat. I mean, he's not relevant in a conversation with me. And it's the only time that I addressed it. And really the only time I'm going to address it. It was ridiculous. I didn't know who that dude was. You put your foot in your mouth, said a couple things. You let the smooth taste fool you. You thought the running man was more than a dance. Whatever it was. And I addressed it the way I always address it when any and everybody historically, not nothing, just addressed it and kept it moving. That's all. There's no statute of limitation on attempted murder. So he'll never, he, and he should never should. He never should. But my biggest issue to this day is I can't get over it. Because I would love to get to a place in my life where I could just give him a pound and be like, it's in the past. Like, understand, like, and have an understanding like, yo, it was just a witty rhyme. Your name of your album was Turn This, Mother's, Turn this Mother Out. The al our album was The Cactus. The Cactus turned Hammer's mother out. It was, it was a dope line. I'm good. I'm not good. I've gone through 25 years of therapy three days a week. I am not good. I wish I could be good. But when somebody tries to kill you over a rap lyric, when I see these things where he's like, ah, man, you know, I had... You know, Oak Town 357 sold more records than third base. And so I, I just want to, like, put a gun in his mouth. You know what I mean? Like, like but, but that's me. Like, that's my anger. That has nothing to do with him. That's like me taking poison and waiting for him to die. That's my poison that I have to deal with, that I have to live with. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I know Hammer. Uh, I've done interviews with him before. Uh, not directly with him, but we've been in the same... No, I know. You know, same radio stations and everything else like that. You never know how things ultimately will work out in the future. People grow up. People mature. And, that, and Ultimately, nothing happened. Nobody actually got hurt. So I could see at one point something actually coming, you know, with the two of you where you might actually be able to shake hands. And no, and, and, I, and, I sh and I should be able to. I remember the last... 
Yo MTV Raps. Ed Lover was nice enough and Ted Demi, may he rest in peace, called me like, yo, you know, you should come down here, be part of the freestyle and all of that. So I came down there and I was working with a group at, uh, called Nonfiction at the time. So I had like 20 goons with me, like Necro and Ill Bill. Like I had like mad goons with me. And uh, I got to do my little freestyle. And towards the end, Ed says to me, he's like, yo, you know, Hammer's here. Let's just, yo, it'd be perfect. The end of Yo! MTV Raps, you and Hammer just make peace. And I look at Ed and I was like, yo, Hammer's here? And I just went, ooh, ooh! And all my boys pulled their ratchets. Because like, we were all carrying. I, I just wanted to find them. And we couldn't, we couldn't find them. But that's where my head was in 1994. Feel it, just feel it a little bit, what you put me and my, and my, my wife through. Just, just feel it for 15 seconds. Understand what it feels like to not know that you can't turn a corner without somebody wanting to kill you for $50,000. Just so we're clear, it's not on him, it's on me. I have to make peace with it. I'm yeah. sure he's made peace with it a million times over. I'm sure he doesn't even think about it. I'm sure it's not even a thought and that's what it should be. I should mature. It's not him, it's me. I should mature. I should get to a place where I'm okay with it. I'm still not okay with it. And I'll work it out. I'll go to therapy for the rest of my life and work it out. <laughs> it's, it's me eating poison waiting for him to die. You know what I'm saying? Like that, it, and it's terrible. And it's destructive. And it's negative. And I know it's something that I have to move past. Um, and it's not his fault. Because I think if somebody would have dissed my mom, and I wouldn't have gotten to the bottom of it, I would have been angry. But I would have dissed them lyrically on a record. I wouldn't have put a hit out on them because I'm an MC.